I'll ask you to turn in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I'll be reading verses 10 through 20, and we will be concentrating on verse 13, <clears throat> but looking at the context as well of verse 13. And I'm preaching on Paul's amazing declaration found in verse 13. Well, let us stand together as we read God's holy word, chapter 4 and verse 10. Paul said, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Amen. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Father, bless your word, bless your people, and exalt Christ, we pray yes. in his precious name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. <clears throat> and so in verse 13, Paul makes an amazing declaration. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Now, if you don't hear very much of what I say tonight, or if I confuse you, which I'm capable of doing, if somehow you don't hear anything else tonight, may you hear the simple declaration of the great apostle, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. <clears throat> Sister Palmer was talking to my wife and I about her testimony, and <clears throat> she mentioned that she had seen a sign that someone had written. And I believe, if I, my memory serves me right, it's only been about a week or so, but <clears throat> she said that the sign said something like, Jesus heals and forgives. And that stuck with her. And God used that to convict her and to speak to her heart and to bring her to Christ. You know, God can use a very simple statement, can't he? God, and, and she, by the way, she writes out longhand on pieces of paper, um, <coughs> Bible verses, and that little statement, uh, Jesus heals and forgives, and she gives them to people. And she gave us one as we sat at a table um, uh, talking together not too long ago. And she also left one on the table at the restaurant. And we went our way. <clears throat> what a wonderful way to, to witness for Christ. Just to write things out longhand, take them out of your purse and set them on the table and go. <laughs> and it's very personal because someone wrote it with their own hand. Well, Paul has given us a wonderful statement here. 
and it is an amazing declaration. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. He confidently declares his readiness to handle all things that may happen in his life through the power of Christ who strengthens him. This is a great verse we should all memorize. I believe that most of us have it committed to memory, even if we didn't try to commit it to memory, because it is such a wonderful text. It is such a wonderful verse of Scripture. Well, we should all memorize it. Who knows, but that you may need it someday um, in a very in a very significant and desperate way in prison. Estranged from your family, all alone in great privation and hunger and coldness and weakness. And you may be quoting this verse and finding great strength and comfort from it. This verse is in the category of experimental or experiential truth rather than doctrinal and positional. Paul is speaking out of Christian experience. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He is speaking experientially. It is also biographical. It is something Paul declares about himself to the Philippians. He's talking about himself. Now, one of the preachers that I highly admire once said that Paul doesn't say very much about himself. But I have discovered in Scripture, by inspiration, that Paul really did say a lot about himself. And he wasn't saying about it about himself to exalt himself, but he was saying it about himself because Christ had so worked in him and Christ wanted him to declare what Christ had done in his life. And so this is biographical. It's something that Paul declares about himself based on his own Christian experience. So it is Paul's own personal declaration. But it's not for Paul only, but it's for all believers. It's not just for Paul, but it's spoken by Paul for the benefit of the Philippians and for us here today by extension. Well, let me ask you this. Can you make this declaration? Are you confident that you can handle all of life's trials? Can you do all things, all things, all things through Christ who strengthens you? Can you say, I can do all things through Christ as I actively trust him in each of the new challenges of life? The challenge of poverty, the challenge of overabundance, the challenge of trials, persecutions, loneliness. Can you do loneliness in trusting Christ as he strengthens you? The challenge of temptations. Are you giving in to temptations or are you standing up against temptations? And surely this is included in Paul's experiential statement I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The challenge of weakness, the challenges of old age, the challenges of sickness, the challenges of fearful things happening around you. Can you say this? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, Paul's declaration is not an absolute declaration. Well, what do you mean by that, Frank? (laughs) It's a marvelous declaration. It's a wonderful, fantastic uh, shout of victory. But it is not an absolute declaration. There are those who have taken this verse to wild extremes. There are those who have... interpreted this verse in such a way that all things is an absolute. 
And I actually came across a brother like that, and I believe he was a brother, <coughs> a simple brother, who said to me, when Paul says, I can do all things, he means all things. Anything in this world that's possible. And <coughs> I tried to correct him. He believed that Paul meant all things in an absolute sense. And the illustration I used with him was this. So are you telling me that you can walk up to a piano and sit down and play that piano perfectly, beautifully right without ever having any training or practice? And he said, yes, through Christ. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> and I tried to share more with him, and I hope, I hope it helped him as we looked at the context and different things. <clears throat> this Paul is not saying I can do supernatural feats of strength, um, like walking through doors and jumping out of airplanes and, and living through it, although I did read about a woman whose parachute failed and who did fall out of an airplane, and she was horribly, horribly smashed against the ground at 80-something miles an hour, and she survived. But that is not a normal thing. <clears throat> or how about solving a calculus problem without being taught the subject of calculus? How, how about being smarter than Einstein, <laughs> although your IQ may be below 100? This is not what Paul is meaning. This is not what Paul means when he says, I can do all things through Christ who strength strengthens me. He's not saying that I can do all things in an absolute sense. But Paul's declaration is limited by the context. Paul's declaration is in a context. It's limited by the broader context of all of Scripture. We should rightly expect Paul's statement I can do all things here in this context to fit into God's commands. Whatever God requires of his people, Paul can do through Christ who strengthens him. <clears throat> it should be limited <clears throat> and agree with the promises of God. If God makes us a promise in his word, then surely those all things that we can do through Christ, <clears throat> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that should agree with the promises of God. That should be in accord with the promises that God makes throughout the entirety of his whole word. And it should agree with the norms of Christian living in all of Scripture. And that's the broader context that, that in which Paul is saying this. We are not expecting that Paul is saying something that is out of accord with normal Christian living, that it's out of accord with the way God works in the lives of people. Paul is not saying you can do more than all of the apostles. You can do more than Christ ever did. You can do this or you can do that, but there is a context here. Paul's declaration is not only limited by the broader context of all of Scripture, <clears throat> but Paul's declaration is limited by the immediate context. There is an immediate context in which Paul is saying this. And so in verse 10, Paul is rejoicing because the Philippians have been gracious and kind, and they have given him a gift. Paul was thanking them for their financial gift to him. In verse 10, he says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again. In verse 14, Notwithstanding, you have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. 
Not that I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. So Paul is thanking the Philippian saints for their giving to him. And Paul does not want them to think that he is asking for more. You know, sometimes you can make a veiled request by excessively thanking someone for all that they've done for you. And Paul does not want them to think that he is, that he is discontented or, or that in saying this, he needs a little bit more than what they have already given. In verse 11 and the first part of the verse, he says, Not that I speak in respect of want. I'm not speaking out of a lack in my life. In, in verse 17, he says, Not because I desire a gift. I'm not saying this because I desire a gift from you. <clears throat> and then Paul declares in that context of thankfulness and not wanting to be misunderstood, Paul declares that he has learned to be content in all kinds of circumstances. Amen. And so in verse 11, he says, Not that I speak <clears throat> in respect of want or need, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Amen. Paul had learned to be satisfied with what he had. He was content when he was abased. He was content when there was abundance. He was content when there was fullness, it's easy to be content when there's fullness. He was content when there was hunger in his life. He was content with abundance, and he was content in times of need. And this is the context in which Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. He's speaking in the context of, of difficulties, in the context of trials, in the context of sufferings, in the context of privations and lacking things. And in that context, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The all things of verse 12, everywhere and in all things I am instructed, are the same all things of verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. The all things that Paul endured and, and suffered and went through <clears throat> in verses 11 and 12 are the same all things through which Christ strengthens me, according to Paul. Paul is saying that whatever circumstances come his way in life, no matter what happens, hunger or abundance, he can handle them with contentment and overcoming power through Christ who strengthens him. Amen. Paul can be content no matter what his situation in life. And he had learned this this is not something that, that Paul says is a part of his position in Christ. But this is something practical. This is something that Paul grew into. This is something that he learned. And it's important that we see that because the verse that we're looking at is not something that we just sit back and say, oh, that's a wonderful truth, and I'm so glad that's true about me in this Christian life. But no... Paul is saying, this is something God has taught me. This is something that I've learned, and I've learned it the hard way. <laughs> and, and, and the school I went to wasn't the best school. It was a tough school. And I have learned to be content. And I have learned that I can do all things. I can handle everything that comes my way circumstantially in life through Christ, who strengthens me. He had learned contentment in the varying circumstances of his life. Now, someone 
once said, I can't go to Africa. Now, I was in Africa at the time. <coughs> and this was another missionary who was pastoring a church um, in Malawi. But he said that someone said to him, and I think it was him who said it, and, and it could have been his wife, but one of them said <coughs> that there was a lady who said, I cannot go to Africa because I absolutely have to have a bathroom with a toilet. Okay? Now, unbeknownst to her, in Africa, there are bathrooms. And in Africa, there are toilets. And in Africa, sometimes there's even toilet paper in the bathroom. But most of the time, there's not toilet paper, but maybe there is cardboard or paper of some kind, paper out of a book, and you're expected to use that in the African bathroom. <coughs> well, it's kind of a shock to an American to find themselves in a situation like that. And so when we went to Africa, we found ourselves in unique situations, like being in a house that had no running water when we first got there in the daytime, and it only flowed at night. We worked out a way of getting water into tanks and getting it into the house. <clears throat> there were times where we had no electricity, and sometimes for weeks, and we learned how to cook using wood outside on the back porch or wherever we could find a proper place to, to cook. <clears throat> As an American, I found it very difficult to live in a house without flowing water. As an American, I found it very hard to live in a house that had no electricity. But I learned that it's okay. <laughs> and you can survive, and, and you can actually be somewhat contented in a situation like that. Even taking a shower without the shower working but using a bucket of water in the shower. And I can take a bath with about a gallon of water. <clears throat> I like it when the water is heated, though. <clears throat> well, of all people, I'm not the great example here, but of all people, Paul had an abundance of opportunities. Paul was called to a life of trials. Amen. And so it was that Paul was stoned at Lystra, and he was really buffeted by those stones to the point that he fell to the ground and they left him there for dead. The disciples gathered round him and Paul rose up and walked away. Oh, Amazing. But suffering from real stones, hitting a real body and feeling real pain and beaten and scourged. And there he was in in the prison at Philippi with Silas, and they had been beaten, and their backs were lacerated. <clears throat> and as they sat there on the cold floor of that jail, in the, in the stocks that were holding their feet, they praised God at midnight. Amen. And Paul had ample opportunities to learn how Christ could give him contentment even in the midst of his sufferings. <clears throat> Paul was shipwrecked. Paul had the care of the churches on his shoulders. Paul had the care of churches with Judaizers going in. And even at one point, having to, to reprove <coughs> Peter and Barnabas and, and the whole lot of the Christians in the Galatian church, as we've heard about. Paul had learned that Christ's strength was made perfect in human weakness. And so he gloried in his necessities and weaknesses. This is something that Paul had learned. Paul had been instructed by the Lord, and he had experienced that learning and that training in the midst of sufferings, in the midst of his trials. Well, if you want to learn, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me, you have to be put to the test. You have to go through 
difficulties and trials and testings. We don't like that in our natural selves. I'm sure that Paul would even be able to say, no, this was not pure pleasure to go through all of these things. But Paul learned to be content in whatever state he was in. What a wonderful testimony. What a, what a wonderful thing that, that Paul had learned contentment no matter what his circumstance in life. Let me ask you here this evening, have you learned contentment in all things? You know, the opposite of contentment is grumbling and griping and complaining and asking questions like, I don't know why God is taking me through this. That's so spiritual, isn't it? I don't know why God is taking me through this. Well, I'm not seeking to mock anyone, and I have said it. But what, I, what I'm saying is, is that Paul had learned contentment in the school of trials and difficulties and testings. And that's where we learn them. And all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. God is using those things for good in our lives. And our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, are eternal. <clears throat> Paul focused his attention on eternal things. <clears throat> and we need to remember those wonderful promises and those wonderful truths in the trials that we're going through. But have you learned contentment? Can you say with Paul, I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me, even though he hasn't answered my prayer. And I have prayed about something for many, many months, perhaps years. And yet, Paul was able to say, I've learned to be content. And that contentment was learned in those sufferings, but that contentment was expressed in verse 13. I can do. All things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Well, Paul's declaration is not only apostolic, but it is a declaration for all Christians. It's the declaration of an apostle. <clears throat> Verse 13 is the declaration of a Christian. I'm sure that most of us have probably claimed this verse for ourselves. I've been claiming it all day knowing that I was going to stand before a group of people. <clears throat> but if you're tempted to think that this is, is only the extraordinary experience of apostles, that only apostles can have this contentment, and only apostles can say, I can do all things through Christ, no matter what the circumstance, through Christ who strengthens me. <clears throat> then I have something for you tonight. This belongs to you. This belongs not only to apostles, but it belongs to Christians. And Paul is speaking as a Christian. In Philippians 3, 17, <clears throat> Paul says, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Be followers together of me. Be followers of me. <clears throat> Be followers of me also as I am a follower of Christ. Don't follow me in the wrong direction, but follow me so long as I'm a follower of Christ. But Paul is exhorting them to follow him, that his life is an example. And our spiritual leaders are set forth before us as examples. And God didn't make um, apostles to be super saints in the sense that, that we, that like a superman, you know, and I can't be a superman. I can watch Superman on TV, and I can say, wow, that's amazing, but I can't be Superman. 
If I put on the cape and I jump off a roof, I'm going to go straight down to the ground. <coughs> and <coughs> as an apostle, Paul is a Christian. Paul is a believer. And he's saying, be a follower of me. And Paul said, I'm content. And I've learned it in my circumstances. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He applies the truth of this verse to them as a church in chapter 4 and verse 19. <clears throat> Using different words, Paul is saying a very similar thing. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. By Christ Jesus, I can do all things. He strengthens me. And by Christ Jesus, God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. <coughs> this verse brings the fullness of Christ and his strength to every believer and not just to apostles. Amen. Paul's God shall supply because he's a giving God and he delights in giving to our need. He shall supply all your need, not necessarily always all your want, but all your need according to his riches and he has eternal riches. He says according to his riches in glory. Not only riches according to your need, but his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so you too can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I'm encouraged by that. I'm encouraged by the fact that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. May that encourage your heart tonight. Paul's declaration is also a declaration of trust, or if you will, of trustfulness. <clears throat> this is the most important part of Paul's declaration and of our message this evening. Paul's declaration is a declaration of trustfulness. The word trust is not in the text, but it is certainly in the background of Paul's declaration. Paul is not boasting in Philippians 4, 13. Far from it. Paul is not boasting. Paul, in saying, I can do all things, is not merely saying, I can do all things. But he is asserting his trust in Christ because it's through Christ who strengthens me. Paul is not vainly preoccupied with himself. His eye is a very humble and needy and dependent eye. He is not proudly saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul knew that severed from Christ, he could do nothing. It is a humble eye. It is an eye in which Paul is realizing his inability to do anything without Christ, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Paul is not claiming perfection in the absolute sense when he says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. He says, I can do all things, but he doesn't say, I always do all things, or I perfectly do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but he says, I can do all things, but only through Christ. Paul is attributing his ability to Christ and the strength that Christ alone gives. Paul does not have this in himself. Paul does not have a reserve in himself, but he's attributing his ability to Christ and the strength he gives. <clears throat> Our translation says, through Christ. The word is literally in Christ. Amen. It's a location. Mm -hmm. I can do all things in Christ who gives me strength, who strengthens me. 
Paul is in Christ positionally, but here he is using in Christ in an experiential context. I can do all things in Christ. Why do we complain of difficult circumstances in our lives? Because we are experientially outside of Christ. Hear me, hear me clearly on this. Because we are experientially, not positionally, positionally you are in Christ. But when you are acting in your flesh, you are experientially out of Christ. You're acting on your own according to the flesh principle that is within you. Why are we discontented and why do we complain and gripe? Because we are not in Christ experientially when we do that. Why do we fall when circumstances bring temptations to us? This is so relevant in our day and time. We are surrounded by temptations. Why do we fall? Because we're acting in the flesh and we're not acting in Christ. We need to learn what Paul had learned. We need to learn in our difficulties to turn to Christ in trust and to draw our strength from Christ. <clears throat> we need to look off and away unto Jesus as we run the race of the Christian life. Amen. We need to live by, the faith, by faith in the Son of God. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life <coughs> which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God or faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. My faith is in Christ. And that's how I live my life. You say, how can a Christian just always, always think of Christ? How can a Christian be constantly thinking of Christ? You need to be. <laughs> He's worth it. He's worthy. This is not natural. You have the Spirit of God within you. You need to trust in Christ continually. We need to apply the blood to the doorposts and eat the paschal lamb, as it were, by faith. We need to hide behind the blood of Jesus, and we need to continually see the blood in, before our eyes, and we need to eat of the paschal lamb by faith. Just as my ducklings run to their mother when in danger, and she's a really good mother, and I grabbed one of her ducklings that was on the wrong side of the fence yesterday, and she ran madly into the fence to attack me, and she failed. Now, she's gotten me a couple times already. But as, as my ducklings run to their mother in danger, we need to flee to Christ. I think Psalm 91 gives us a beautiful Old Testament picture and I'm going to read it to you. Psalm 91. The psalmist says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. I will trust in Him. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. I can see Paul reading that and even possibly thinking of that in regard to what he's saying. Well, have you ever had a great time in devotions only to fail as you went away from that blessed hour. You have such a sweet time of reading the word and of prayer, and you, and you go out into the, into the difficulties of life, and you fall and you fail. Has it ever happened? It's happened. It's happened to most of us. I think it's happened to all of us. It's happened to me. 
that I have experienced blessings, and then I go out and I find myself sharply responding to someone or misbehaving in the flesh. <clears throat> How does that happen? How does that happen? The resources for power are not in us, but in Christ as we trust in him. Amen. It's not that God fills up your tank in the morning and then you walk through the day on the fuel that God has given you. But no, you get blessed in the morning and you needed it that morning. And as you leave the place of devotion, you need to keep your eyes on Christ. And you need to keep trusting in him in every circumstance of life. We actually have empty gas tanks in ourselves. And we must experience him, we must experience Christ in his strength moment by moment as we trust in him. Amen. Don't ever go into an, a, a situation of difficulty and temptation thinking to yourself, I sure do feel strong today. I have the resor resources that I need and I'm going to handle this well. No, you're not. You need Christ. Amen. And you need to look into him in dependency. Amen. Paul was looking to Christ trustingly. Well, can you say, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content? Can you say that? If you can't say that boldly and with confidence today, you should. You should begin to say that. And, and you should not look at your past performance and say, I'm just going to fail again. Look to Christ and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But I need to look to him trustingly. Are you content to be humbled and to abound, to be full and to be hungry, to have a great abundance and to suffer need. Are you content to be who God made you to be? Are you content to be the person that God made you to be? And to have the blessings God has blessed you with? Are you content to occupy a lowly place in Christ and in his strength? Can you say with Paul, I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. May the Lord bless you to say it more and more boldly as you trust in him. Amen. May God bless us. Father, we thank you for your word. Seal it to our hearts. Lord, just like Sister Palmer's little, little statement, Lord, put this upon our minds and our hearts. I can do <coughs> all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. We ask in his precious and holy name. Lord, comfort the heart of the one who is struggling here tonight. Amen. Give them grace to rise up and to stand upon the truth of your word and to trust you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.